Hey guys, this video is going to be a bit shorter this week, so I decided to change things up. In this video, I will be covering three early dynastic period artifacts from Mesopotamia. I highly recommend, if you haven't already, to watch my previous video on the early dynastic period, as it may give you a little more context on the Mesopotamian period. Now, let's take a look at the first artifact. This artifact is called Stele of Umashigal. It is from the early dynastic 1 period and dates from 2900 to 2700 BC. This artifact is Sumerian, and it most likely came from Uma, or known as modern Joka. The medium is gypsum alabaster, and is classified as a stone inscribed leaf. Here is some background history. The earliest written documents from Mesopotamia were records of land sales, or grants, that were generally carved in stone. It is possible that these types of documents were on display for all of the people to see. In this Sumerian stele, it documents a priest of the god Shera named Umashigal and his daughter. These two are the main central focus of a transaction of three fields, three houses, and some livestock. Since this document uses a very ancient script, we do not know if the priest is buying, selling, or granting these assets. The smaller figures on the sides, seen here, probably represent people that witnessed the transaction. This ancient document provides us with a look into how writing developed over time. But another important thing to take away from this artifact is that it shows evidence that land in early Mesopotamia could be privately owned, even though a large quantity of land was owned by the gods and managed by their temples. Privately owned land may not seem that amazing as we live in modern times, but in ancient times, this was a very big concept that progressed civilization as we know it. The second artifact is called the Standing Male Worshipper. The artifact comes from the Sumerian culture and is in the early dynastic 1 to 2 period. From around 2900 to 2600 BC, the artifact is from Ishauna, or known as modern Tel Esmar. The medium is gypsum alabaster, shell, black limestone, and bitumen. The artifact is classified as a stone sculpture. Here is a little background history. In ancient Mesopotamia, the gods were believed to be physically present in experiences of daily life and material objects. The god Enil, told in the later Akkadian version of the Epic of Gilgamesh, is known for causing the mythical Great Flood. He is represented as a raging storm or wild bull, while the goddess Inanna represented the morning star and the evening star. The people of Mesopotamia at this time believed that the gods inhabited their religious statues after they made the proper rituals to animate them. That is why we have fragments of worn statues being well preserved as they were cared for within the walls of the temple. As for the artifact, the standing male worshipper, it was placed in the square temple at Tel Esmar. It is possible this statue is dedicated to the god Abu, who in the Sumerian religion was a minor god of plants. The statue of the worshipping man was just that, to have a piece of the person it was representing set in stone to pray forever. People in Mesopotamia were also equally considered to be able to physically manifest themselves in the statues. That is why similar statues have been found, some of which were inscribed with the names of the rulers and their families. The last artifact is a Sumerian headdress. The headdress is from the city of Ur in the early dynastic 3A period. This artifact is dated between 2600 to 2500 BC. The medium is gold, lapis lazuli, and carnelian. The headdress is classified as an ornament. Here's a bit of background history. Back in ancient Mesopotamia, kings and the upper class became very powerful and independent from the power of the temples through the early dynastic period, but the king still depended on the gods for support. A massive discovery of magnificent wealth was found at the cemetery in the city of Ur, but I'll talk more about the royal cemetery in another video. The delicate headdress was worn on the forehead of one of the female worshippers in the place called the king's grave. The followers that were entombed also wore necklaces of gold and lapis lazuli, hair ribbons made of gold, and silver hair rings. What is interesting is that the gold, silver, lapis, and carnelian are not native to Mesopotamia. That would mean that the rare materials found in the royal tomb of Ur demonstrates how wealthy the early dynastic kings were. It also proves that there was a complex system of trade that exceeded far past the Mesopotamian river valley. 
What do you guys think about these three artifacts? What does it say about the early dynastic period of Mesopotamia? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like the content, leave a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe for more historical content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.